The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Yodel, how cool a name is that? He has an interesting background in recruitment, would you believe, and also tapping into graduate talent from universities that I actually think possibly the financial advice industry could learn from because we're going to need to do a lot more of that and now spends what I imagine is an inordinate amount of time surrounded by lawyers, which must be something of a shift for him. So thank you so much for joining me on the show, Brandon Thompson. Woo! Pleasure, Peter. Thank you. My uh, my recruitment and graduate programs Australia days seem like a million years ago, <laughs> but um, no, for the last... Um, Probably 15, it's been playing with tech businesses in Australia, uh, New Zealand, China, Singapore, and the Middle East. Wow. So no experience at all? No, no, not at all. No, no, none at all. None (laughs) None at all. all. Not at all. No idea about this tech stuff. And I I, I try, I actually don't spend a lot of time with lawyers. (laughs) Oh, there you go. That's a good thing. (laughs) I nearly said that I'm like, oh, we should feel sorry for him because he has to, but that's not fair to our lawyers, brothers and sisters that we all know well. That hardly seems fair. And they are are a very, very important part of of our process, of our workflow. Correct. Um, And in fact, um, I think probably just like maybe people with financial advice avoid it unnecessarily, I think maybe anything to do with lawyers, we do the same, which we probably shouldn't, right? Yeah, there, there's a stigma with lawyers. It's mm. scary. It's expensive. You generally exactly. are only talking to a lawyer when something bad is happening. Right. Um, yeah. And people always prioritise out things that they don't understand. Exactly. And a lot of people don't understand lawyers. Exactly. Well, now, I'm very Keen to pick your brain about all things Yodel, but before we do, let's just take a moment to get to know you through your use of technology. Yes. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I use them all the time. Ooh, okay. Um, picture, picture says a thousand words. Yes. <laughs> um, my my probably most used emoji. Uh, if if I'm, I'll, I'll give you two. Mm-hmm. If I'm messaging my kids, it's the little smiley face with a little love heart in the mouth. I yes. use that one often. But generally, it's the you know, that smiley one with the egg face where they're screwing up their mouth, yes. and it's like, oh, that seems to fit my life. Um, <laughs> and when you when you when you when you when you're doing this sort of job that I do, yeah. um, and you're you know you're running a a scale up technology business, yeah, uh, with a with a million moving parts, yeah, and and very much in a changing landscape as everyone. Who would be an mm. audience to this podcast would know the last couple of years? Uh, you tend to pull that face a lot, yeah. generally just before you hit send. Yeah, yeah so, yes. so that, I, that would be that would be my the the the, the eek face. I actually had a um, somebody with an advice comment recently that um, he he felt that we're all a bit like race car drivers. It's not that we can control the car; it's that we just manage to keep it within the guardrails. So you know, there's no control, but <laughs> we do. We're keeping it within the broad. 
the broad area we're meant to, and the rest and, and is just is riding skill. the wave. That is a skill on its own. Right? That is a skill on its own. Exactly. So, second tech question. Well, like we're all permanently attached to our smartphones, but if you had to take all the apps off it and just keep three, which three would you keep? Three. Um, definitely my calendar. Right. I, I live in a calendar. Everything is in a calendar. So, yeah, a calendar would definitely stay. Uh, the second one uh, would be photos, without a doubt, would be the photo app. Awesome. Um, I'm, you know, I, I have a thing in our house and it's, it's on our fridge, it's everywhere, and that is collect memories, not things. Yeah. So photos, the memories of photos, the stories behind photos, um, yeah, I, I would definitely keep that one. And the third one, that's easy, it would be my BMW Motorrad app. I ride motorcycles, that's my passion. <sighs> Uh, ride and ride and race motorcycles has been uh, for most of my life. Yep. The places you go, the things you see, the people you meet. Um, so yeah, we, you would definitely be the, my my BMW Motorrad app. That'd be my three. I love it. Well, now the poor uh, listener won't be able to see this, but you can behind me. You'll see that there's a whole lot of photos on the wall. Uh, yep. They're blurred, but you'll, you'll be able to see. So, in fact, there's this very cool service where you can take the photos you collect on your phone, you can select some, and they print them onto what look like Polaroids. And so mm-hmm. then you can have them. So that's sort of my wall of of moments, you know, and things yep. that we've enjoyed because I'm right there with you. I'm far less about the things and far more about the experiences and the Ab- people absolutely. you yep. have them with. Collect, collect memories, not things. Absolutely. Yeah, things can go away, but the memories stay. And then particularly, you know, you look at what we do, and that is, you know, the estate planning, or we use the words transfer and protection of of, of wealth. Yeah. Yeah. That is is largely about changes in people's life. Yeah, big changes, yeah. It's the memories stay. The photos are important. You you keep the memories, even though other things around that may change. Mm, Absolutely. And I think... It is, and we'll dive into Yodel in a section in a second. But I do think, even for financial advisors, not just their clients, this is a difficult topic because it's emotional. Like you just can't be clinical about this. Like I think money is emotional generally, to be fair, but in particular, <laughs> this portion of the work that that we all do is particularly emotional, and I think that makes it that bit harder um, to dive into because we're like, how do we navigate that? You know, and, and if it's if it's hard for clients, it's going to be, you know, hard for us multiple times because we'll be doing that for multiple clients. So I do think, you know, I get why there's lots of um, advice practices that aren't quite as deep into this as they otherwise might be because of that hesitation, you know, it's, and, it and is. You're, you're exactly right. At the end of the day, you're talking about Money and loved ones. Mm. You you yeah. don't get two more emotive pillars, correct? Really, in in anybody's life, correct? Um, and that's why we 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 don't really or we steer away from the the technical term of estate planning. Yep, and we we talk about it or we refer to what we enable advisors to deliver. Right. Uh, we we refer to that as the transfer and protection of wealth. Yep. If you are having an estate planning conversation, that is, it's a black and grey conversation. It's, yep. It is a term that <clears throat> historically has been negative. It has historically been associated with end of life. Yeah. So that is a difficult conversation to have. Yeah. But if you have a conversation that is about the transfer and protection of wealth mm. for the benefit of your family and loved ones... Mm. That is a very yellow and orange conversation. Yeah. And that is a very easy conversation for people to have. Yes. So part of what we do with our users is is we spend a lot of time talking to them about the narrative and how to frame those conversations. You don't have a black and grey conversation with your clients. Mm. You have a yellow and orange conversation yeah. with your clients. And I think there's a lot of um, – I think there's something we miss about the words we use a lot in financial services. Um, I mean, we've recently had the federal budget and it's a good example. Every time they use the word superannuation in the federal budget, every Australian thinks it's bad and therefore they should stop contributing. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad and what they're announcing. There's this connotation that every time the government messes with something, it's bad. And similarly, I think there's weight with estate planning because I think in people's heads, when they hear estate, they think, super wealthy Texan family in a movie who've got this massive estate of money, that can't have anything to do with me. Do you know what I mean? Like I think we've all got this association with that word that 
mm-hmm. in their heads means it's nothing to do with them. Well, I don't need to do that. I yeah. don't have an estate. Like, <laughs> do you know and, what I mean? And like, welcome, I think it's... welcome to my hobby horse, you know. Right. <laughs> just, um, you sit down and you talk to these people, you know, mum, dad, a mortgage, a superannuation fund, maybe some insurance attached to superannuation. Yep. It's not hard to come up with half a million dollars just there. Yeah. But then you start looking at the the less tangible elements of your estate planning. I mean, it could be a treasured photo. It could be grandma's wedding ring. You know? Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot more to it. But then it's not just about what you have. It's about what position you're putting people in that are your family and loved ones in the event that you go through planned or unplanned changes in your life. It mm-hmm. may not be just about okay, I have a tremendous amount of wealth or I have a large right. estate. You might have a very small estate, but your focus is equally on, I want to make this simple for people. I don't want there to be arguments. I want my wishes and my legacy to be honoured as I intended. Yeah. I don't want family disputes. I don't want arguments. Yeah. So there's a whole nother element to the outcomes of what we do yeah. or the consequences of the process that we enable advisors to deliver. Yeah. Um, that is completely not related to the size of your estate. I had, I um, was chatting to a friend and we were talking about um, she'd witnessed something uh, both hysterical but but not great at a wedding, you know, and some some behaviour that occurred that was somebody um, being, you know, inappropriate and negative and all sorts of things. And, and we both agreed that there's two situations that seem to bring out both the best and the absolute worst in people, and it's weddings and funerals. And that's the challenge with, you know, dealing with an inheritance and the person that's going to have to potentially handle that on our behalves is they're going to be dealing with potentially people at their worst, unfortunately. And it's just how it is. It's the reality of the way the world works. And, and it's often particularly surprising. You know, I think some people can really surprise you as to, you know, where they dig the hills in. And so I think you're right being proactive about this sort of thing and and ensuring the person that you've nominated um, to step into that role has everything in, you know, all the tools they need to yep. minimise the extent to which they have to hurt And cats. again, it's, it's, it's the protect word that you see in all of our narrative. Yeah. Um, it's, it's protect. It's not only protecting your assets. It's not only protecting your wealth. It's not only protecting your legacy, but it's also protecting your family and loved ones yeah. when you're not there to do that. And it's about protecting them when often they're in one of the most difficult and the most vulnerable periods of their life. Yeah. So the protection is a very, very broad term that yeah. is as much soft as it is hard. Mm. Mm, exactly. Well, look, let's um, let's dive into Yodel specifically. So for those that maybe haven't heard um, about you guys, I'm sure lots have, but that haven't, you know, what category broadly as a tool or service do you guys fall under for, you know, financial advice as a market? Yodel is to estate planning what zero is to accounting. Okay. Okay. We don't deliver estate planning. We don't do estate planning. We're not advisors. We're not accountants. We're not banks. We're not super funds. We're not lawyers. Mm -hmm. We have a tool that enables our users who are financial planners, accountants, all of those verticals I just mentioned to deliver an estate planning solution to their clients end to end. Okay. So Yodel is a facilitation tool that enables our users to deliver dedicated estate planning. And you mentioned, just as you've seen that you mentioned, you know, certainly advisors, but accountants. Um, I'm been, like have, taking a look at the website. You guys, you know, interact with dealer groups. Um, is there any any extent to which you deal direct to the consumer? Not at this point. Okay. That's not the that's not the market that we fill. Yep. We have some consumers come to us because they find us, and we do have obviously the knowledge, the networks, the resources, the tools to be able to facilitate that. Yeah, but that's not our focus. No, okay. You, you, mm. You've got to be niche, or you've got to be big. Yeah. Um, we we sell, saw an opportunity out of our founders' own operational frustrations to enable or empower or, or facilitate the advice market mm-hmm. to deliver. A, a dedicated estate planning or transfer and protection offering. Yep, and that's the that's the space that we fill. 
Okay. And so the, in, say within an advice practice then, uh, do you guys find that the primary user is the advisor or is there other members of the team that end up interact? Like who do you, who ends up playing with the, the tool or, or utilizing it, do you find? Primarily the advisor. Okay. We have two workflows in the Yodel solution. One is what we refer to internally as DCE, which is basically direct consumer engagement. Yep. Or it can be advisor-led. So right. regardless of whether the will maker is the one initiating and driving the process or whether it's the advisor initiating and driving the process, yep. the Yodel workflows cater for, for both. For both, okay. And so then because – you know, there would there might be elements of the conversations or 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 you know information gathering that, that a practice could probably consider other participants. But to date, what you're finding is advisors are the ones that are generally the the ones you. An see. advisor okay. may have an administrative person that might assist with some of the document collection or the data collection. Yep. Now, um, they could be users in the system with you know the the correct. Uh, roles and permissions and access and, and all of those compliance elements, which are fundamental and inherent in everything that Yodel does. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, primarily, the driver of this process is the advisor. Yep. They may get the will maker or their client to mm -hmm. do parts of that process mm -hmm. inside Yodel. They may get internal resources to deliver parts of that process. But the fundamental owner. Of, of any matter, that's our terminology mm -hmm. internally as a matter in the yep. system, uh, is generally owned and driven by the advisor. Okay. And so, I mean, clearly this is something that, like I said earlier, um, isn't done or proactively done for by every advice practice in the country. Um, but I'm expecting actually over time that's going to change just due to the sheer volume uh, of transfer that's going to be happening, um, which is ludicrously large. Um, and so I guess what I'm interested in is your insights for, you know, practices you have taken through that journey. So, you know, some people I'm betting come to you with with a service that's established and you're more um, – just, you know, an enhanced tool that they use. So it's almost like you just Absolutely. plugged into their service, right? Um, yep. I'm, well, both, but I'm curious about the ones where this is this is newer to them. You know, what's the process yep. you take them through and, and what do you find, you know, they I, I need? Will, I'll answer that in two parts. Number one, what you touched on uh, at the preface of the question was intergenerational wealth transfer. Mm. You cannot ignore it. No. It's not something. It's not something that is going to happen. It's not something that is coming. It is something that is here. Yeah. Um, so what we have really noticed, uh, I would say, over the last eighteen months, is a significant shift in the mindset of our clients, yep. whether they're accountants, financial planners, dealer groups, whoever. Yep. A significant shift in their mindset about their need to be doing what Yodel enables them to do. Right. I think that comes from a number of different places. I think that comes from the outcome of all of the reviews and the turmoil and the whirlwinds and the tornadoes that the entire industry has fought through for years. Mm -hmm. And you're at a point where anyone who has gone through that and made a conscious decision to stay professionally operating in this industry is now looking at what do we need to do in our business? What can we do better? How do we engage with our clients? How do we generate new revenue? How do we maintain compliance? How do we better yeah. service our customers? How do we grow our business? You know, all of those sorts of things. And estate planning or transfer and protection fits squarely in that. Yeah. So the next part, you look at the commercial opportunity. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll look at the numbers behind this. ABS data shows that nearly one third of the Australian population, 25.4 million people, are over the age of 55. Mm -hmm. Okay. 63% of Australian adults do not have a current or valid will. Yeah. Keep in mind, a will is not an estate plan. A will is only yep. a component of an, an estate plan. Of, Very yeah. important distinction. So you look at that transfer, 19% or just over 19% of the population who are aged 40 to 54 will inherit $3.5 trillion. Trillion dollars. Yeah. Um, up to 202050. So that's $224 billion a year. So there is not only a need, an absolute need, but there's also a significant commercial opportunity for these advice businesses. Yeah. yeah. And, and an analogy I'll use very, very quickly. 
You go back to pizza shops, a pizza shop 10 years ago, they would spend a fortune on infrastructure and accommodation and leases and all those sorts of things, and their businesses would operate from 5 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. Those businesses look for ways to uh, extract more value out of their assets and their expenses. Estate planning is no different for every single advice. You already have the relationships. You already have the people. Yep. Okay? With little or no effort, you can open your pizza shop from 8 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Just by adding one additional service line that is entirely complementary to what you're already doing with these people anyway. Yep. Um, and grow your business, generate more revenue, all of those sorts of things. And look, and when it comes down to it, solve a problem that they have. Like this yeah. is a, <laughs> this is something. Yep. And like you say, it is more than that. I mean, something that's an operational experience that you know practices may not have gone through because they may not have the age demographic in their in their client base. But you yep. know, we have experienced powers of attorney and the need to have them in place, and what happens when they aren't, and and even when you do have them, trying to submit them to providers, and like. This is one of those pain in the neck <laughs> things if you don't have these yep. things in place. And we're not yep. talking about because, you know, somebody's, you know, 90 and has dementia. This can be because somebody's overseas and can't get something done, you know, while they're on a leave or like there's all sorts of reason these things yeah, can one of the one of the busiest one of the busiest periods for estate planning is holiday periods. It's not because anything's wrong. Yeah. It's just minimizing risk because yeah. we're all getting on an aeroplane. <laughs> yeah, correct, right? So uh, just to answer the other half of your question, and that was what do uh, what conversations do we normally have with advisors who come to us? Mm. Number one, advisors don't need to be educated on the importance of estate planning. They already know it. Yeah. Okay, they either choose to do it or they choose not to do it. Yeah. If an advice business is business chooses to do it, there is not a set of circumstances or a commercial requirement for any advice business that one of our various Yodel solutions or tools cannot satisfy in full. Yep. Okay. So nearly every conversation we have with an advice business who has made a decision that they want to do estate planning converts to a successful outcome for Yodel and then ultimately their business. Yep. You look at the other side of that coin and that is people who know the importance but have not made the decision to implement something, Mm. we find that um, very much they will identify a need, pick up that relationship, flick it over the fence to a lawyer, recommend that their client goes and sees a lawyer, and then they spend the next six months at a massive opportunity cost um, chasing the client up, have you done it, have you not done it? And that process is categorized by two things. Number one is a long time to complete, and the second is an exceptionally high fail to complete. Yes. So at the end of the day, there is no service delivery, there's no value to the client, and there's an increased risk from a liability and compliance perspective for the advisor. So when people come back to us, they are asking a couple of questions. Uh, Number one, how do I make money from this? Yep. Okay. Interestingly, you rewind three and a half years, that was seldomly ever a consideration for an advice business. <laughs> right. Seldomly ever. But now, how do I make money from this? Yeah. Okay. If you use Yodel correctly, it becomes a profit center, not a cost center, and uh, you should be generating revenue. Yodel, Yodel is not a cost to your business. Yes, there are costs, but yep. if you do it properly, it is not a cost. Um, so that's the first question they ask about the commercial arrangements and how do I make money? The second thing that they ask is, how much of my time is this going to take? Mm -hmm. We have invested very heavily in a whole series of tools and features that support advisors to set up and integrate with their websites, all the narrative, all the tips, all the tricks, all the entry points. We've got Yodel and Box tools, which use high-quality emotive-based video, which forms part of their marketing. We can link our DC entry points to SMS, social media. We've got over 300 pieces of social media content advisors can use. So we've invested a lot of time in getting their clients to self-prioritize their estate planning and bringing those opportunities back to the advisor. That's the first bit. Yep. The second bit is processing a matter. Mm. Now, that is an, an, that's an administrative exercise for an advisor, not 
an advice exercise. So facilitation. You're you're the you're the glue that's sort of you are yeah. you, you are collecting wishes, you are collating documents, you yeah. know, you're not giving any advice. So yeah. that's that's an administrative process that again yeah. we leverage tech to make that as simple as we possibly can. Yep. And then at the end of the day, all of that goes into an electronic shoebox and gets sent over to a lawyer. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, that's the second question they ask is about um, how much time is this going to take? So uh, the, the reality to that question is if you use all of the tools and exploit Yodel to its fullest potential, the time limit or the, the time impost on an advisor to ensure their clients are fully protected uh, is, is surprisingly minimal. Okay. The third question that we always get asked is around compliance. Any advisor, any dealer group, any potential client can throw any question at us around compl- compliance, defensibility, information security, APRA, ASIC, TPB, ATO. Yep. Um, throw it at us. Been there, done that, got a T-shirt. That is, it's fundamental in the design and the development of Yodel, right down to individual uneditable audit trails that sit behind every single matter. So yeah. once we tick those three boxes in the, in the mind of an advisor yep. and we do a demonstration of the solution and people get to see how the technology works, it becomes relatively simple. So then for the end client, the end consumer, um, yep. the difference between, just so I can sort of really understand, the difference between, what, you know, you've got an advisor who's doing the right thing and bringing up the fact you, you know, client, Mr. Client, you need to be on top of this. Um, please sure. go and see somebody, right? So then the the client in that situation needs to, of course, go and see a lawyer, but also effectively brief, understand what they want, what they need, you know, all those. So there's a there's a whole level of, ex, of insight that probably the client doesn't have to even be able to ask the lawyer what they should get. Um, because an, a lawyer, not unlike ourselves, you know, we do fill orders in the, in the sense that somebody needs to make a request of us. You know, lawyers are, are similar in that respect. They can't just wave a magic wand, you know. Order takers versus order makers. And, right, right. And, and, and so... And we... Yeah. Yeah, so for the client that terminology then, all the time. Right. Um, we, we try and make the advisor the order taker. Right. So we use our tools to promote the importance of estate planning back out to their clients. Yeah. And, and they do it. We don't do it. They yeah. do it, but they use our tools. Yeah. The client or the will maker or, or the, their client brings that opportunity back to the advisor and then we enable them through the Yodel solutions to process that matter very, very simply, very, very efficiently. Yeah. Okay. And so then, you, you know, so, so for the for the client then that's engaged with the advisor and the advisor is using Yertl, is the difference really from the client's perspective that they're fully empowered such that when it hits the lawyer, it's prescriptive in that sense, in that it's yep. very clear what's required. The, the, the work is basically done right. outside of legal advice right. and formalizing documents. Okay. So it's almost the lawyer's job at that sense. So, okay, so just to draw that out again for people who haven't experienced that, then in one instance, the lawyer is almost creating from scratch something, right? Because in the end, all of this is a set of series of documents and things like that, right? Instead of creating that from scratch, what they're really doing is um, casting their expertise, their legal expertise over something that's there and helping the client, making sure the client understands what is there. Is that a fair- and yep. the advisor is the advisor is doing that as a valuable service to, for, and with their client. They're building trust. They're building loyalty. They're yep. delivering advocacy. Yep. They're building those stronger relationships with the will maker. Yeah. Um, and then it goes to the lawyer. So yep. the, the the reality is every matter that that goes through Yodel must be finished with a lawyer. Okay, that yes. is non-negotiable. Every yeah. matter starts with a needs assessment and a recommendations report, and every matter finishes with a lawyer. Non-negotiable book ends to the Yodel workflow. Yeah. Um, by the time a matter goes to a lawyer, the reality is it's probably 85% complete. Right. Other than the lawyer engaging personally with the will maker, which they do in every single instance. Yodel mm. is not an online will. Mm. A, a, a real lawyer who is an estate planning specialist will engage with your client in every single instance and yep. will complete every single matter. Yeah. Okay? I can't say that enough because it's yeah. a, a huge differential. But all they are doing is 
confirming that their understanding of the client's wishes is correct, providing legal advice around any specific risks that the advisor may have identified. Yep. Could be a blended family with an estranged child. Right. Yeah. It could be special needs. It could be a whole range of different things. But all the lawyer's doing is confirming their understanding of this matter is correct, providing legal advice around um, specific elements of that set of circumstances, and then finalizing documents. That's all the lawyer's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, I'm curious about how the lawyers, so I'm, I'm, well, I'm betting that there's some that are, you know, well engaged with this as part of the, the solution for the client connected to advisors, but for ones that are new to this, how do you, what's the response you get from lawyers? It's, it's a three stage response. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I love lawyers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of lawyers. They, they are critical to what we do and they're critical to the value proposition that Yodel enables our clients, who are the advisors, to deliver to their clients. Yeah. Um, the initial response from lawyers is, uh, you're trying to take our jobs. Right. Okay. That lasts about two minutes. Uh, the second response from lawyers is, yeah, okay, um, let's have a look at this. Yep. Let's 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 see how this actually works because it is a, a new way of doing things. Yep. And then once they have seen the Yodel process, what gets delivered to them and the quality of the precedent documents that are generated directly out of the Yodel solution. Yeah. They end up coming back to us going uh, how do we go on your preferred panel of lawyers and can you actually re- be referring us work from other advice groups? Okay. Yeah. Um, so okay. it's it's a very good, very good relationship we have with lawyers and, and they are a critical part of, of the service delivery. And let's be really, really open and, and fair here. Advisors have the same, you know, we're skeptical about things that come from external that come to us that seem to almost sometimes encroach on what we're doing, you know, instead of sort of going, oh, well, let's see, you know, like being open, it's natural for people to be skeptical. So, you know, I don't, um, I, I'm with you. I don't think we need to judge lawyers for that. It's more, it's more about, well, you want the ones that are happy to just experience and see. And then if it adds value, of course, they're going to want to be, um, want to be part of that. You know, well, it makes lawyers, sense to they, them. They need to ensure that their professional obligations are being met. They need exactly. to ensure that what we've done in the background doesn't diminish the quality or the value of, of their advice. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't. It, in yeah. fact, enhances, it enhances what they're doing. So that becomes relatively simple. Lawyers are really just a cog in our service delivery. Mm. Uh, we don't have a lot to do with them. Uh, we don't go out and actively pursue lawyers. Yep. Uh, the Yodel solutions are designed to be lawyer agnostic. So right. if an advisor has existing relationships with a lawyer or a law firm then or a fine. client has existing relationships with a lawyer or a law firm, they can still use them. So yeah. all of our work and support is is directed at the client experience and advisor end, mm-hmm. not not the lawyer end. Yeah, okay. And in terms of the way you're seeing practices do this, and of course I'm imagining this is as long as a piece of string, but – There'll be some practices that do, you know, an all up, say, and I'm just picking an annual fee that covers that covers yep. a whole lot of things they do for clients, you know, and so this could just be one of the things, you know, so it's all uh-huh. part of the the total fee, um, yep. and that's that's one way. But you know, I'm imagining there's others that because they haven't been doing this before, then this might be like an add on, you know, it might be an extra. Hey, and if you'd like to, if or if you'd like us to, here's an add on. Are you? Is that what you're seeing, sort of like a, a facilitation fee or something? Like it's it's a is that how they're handling it? We we see we see three different general ways that advice businesses work. You've got some businesses that charge an advice fee, and it already includes estate planning in the advice fee. Yeah. So they pick up the client relationship, run the entire process through to completion via Yodel, uh, and that entire service loop is encapsulated in the one-off advice. Yeah. We see another subset of our users who are generally advice businesses or accountants um, who will build the estate planning at least assessment, needs assessment yep. um, into every single conversation, a, yep. a, a dedicated element of their, their client engagement strategy. Yep. And keep in mind, you only need to invest six or seven minutes to go through, sorry, six or seven minutes to set up a matter inside Yodel 
complete a 12-question needs assessment, be given a personalized recommendations report that tells the client exactly what they need and, more importantly, the reasons why they need it. Right. And and to give them a fixed price quote, inclusive of the cost of the lawyer, because every lawyer accepts our terms and conditions, including our costs. Yep. So regardless of if you've got lawyer A or lawyer Z doing the legal work on a matter, the cost is always exactly the same. Yep. So you're able to give them, set up a matter, do a needs assessment, personalised report, recommendations, and a fixed price quote. It's seven or eight minutes. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's the power of Yodel. Yeah. And then your client really only has one of three choices then. Yep, let's do this. Uh, that sounds good. Let me think about it. Or no, I don't want to do this at all. Yeah. Now, there is still a, a valid outcome for the client relationship and the advice business, regardless of which option they choose. Yeah. If they decide they want to go and do it, enhanced service delivery, better relationships, better attention, increased attraction, generating revenue, no risk. Yeah. Low or no risk. If they are going to think about it later, it's a valid reason for you to continue to engage with that client from a relationship perspective. Yeah. If they choose not to do it, because you've gone through such a very, very simple but comprehensive initial process. Yeah. You still added value to your business by minimizing risk. You, there, there is no doubt in relation to what side of the best interest duty fence that you're sitting on. Yeah. So even though you haven't delivered a transfer and protect service, you haven't generated revenue, you've still added value to your business by minimizing risk. And so let's talk. So then there's the initial work clearly um, that establishes a plan. But then, of course, people's situations change over time. Uh, and there's a need to to update. Um, how does that work? So how is that being handled, or or what is it? Is it is it an entirely new matter? Is it like how does that work for? No, it's not an entirely new matter. Um, all of that data persists um, okay. inside Yodel. Yep. Um, but once a matter is marked complete by a lawyer, all of that data is securely archived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in the event that there are changes planned or unplanned in someone's life, keep yeah. in mind, it might not be in the client's life. It could be a change in a beneficiary's life. I was about to say. it could be say. a change in an executor's life. You know, a, a child um, gets married or that. divorced or whatever. Mm. Like, <laughs> all yeah. of that. Yep, know? yep. Or touch wood, something far worse. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, all of that can be brought back out. You're not okay. starting flat-footed. You already have the relationship with your advisor. He's already, he or she, has already has background knowledge of your circumstances. You already have a relationship with the lawyer. Uh, you are fla- far from flat-footed. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so then in terms of from the end user's perspective, uh, is there any extent to which they interact with Yodel directly um, or is it really more as an output sense? No, Yodel, Yodel is a tool. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Uh, you you would use Microsoft Word in your office, um, but you never talk to Microsoft. Yeah. So we don't generally have any direct engagement In- interface with the or, end will yeah. maker. Yeah. Um, with two exceptions. Number one is user support. Yep. Okay. Full user support, phone, email, online, everything. If any of the users are going through the system and something isn't working or they're just not sure, they can contact Yodel Support and we'll facilitate them through that. Yep. Now, but that is purely a support role. The second option or the second instance where we may engage directly with a will maker, uh, we have a, a service offering called Yodel Concierge mm-hmm. uh, where we might use our resources at the request of an advice business right, to do the administrative functions around the data collection, document collation. Okay. Um, an advice business may see a need for estate planning, but they don't have resources. Yep. So they can outsource that to us. And in that instance, now under the direction of the advice business, yep. we would engage with that client, collect the information, collate the documents, identify the risks, make the notes for the lawyer, um, but we would do that as a representative of their business, not as you. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Perfect. How about integration? So, if, uh, do you integrate with any other, you know, tools, advice tools, or anything like that? Uh, Yodel has been designed and developed from day one uh, to be what's called API first. Yep. So anything I can do with a computer and a keyboard, we can do via API. Uh, we have an existing integration 
with and the name's going to escape me. Uh, I'll come back. I'll remember it while I'm while I'm talking. An advice tool, X plan. Uh, no, it's not X plan. No. Uh, watch this space on that yeah, one. Okay. <laughs> Astute wheel. Ah, there we go. Uh, yep. We've got the existing integration with Astute wheel. Yes. We have uh, two others that are currently in development. Okay. And uh, watch this space on a third. Okay. Um, integration is really really important. Now, for a number of different reasons. Number one, it reduces the time and the resources required by an advisor. Yeah, that's that's number one. Yeah. Number two, uh, it reduces um, human error in data entry. Mm. Uh, and number three, uh, and this is where our integrations tend to be more bespoke rather than off the shelf, plug this in, push this button, you're already connected. Um, often through the estate planning process or through the, the process where we're collecting data, mm. You will find that a lot of the data that is being held in advice business systems is outdated. Right. So at the completion of a matter, we're able to bi-directionally feed that data right. back, Yep. tag, identify, and overwrite yep. our outdated data. Yeah, okay. Um, and in terms of integration, what we also find is there's three types of data. There is data that will sit in an advice business's business systems yep. that, that can automatically be pulled across. Simple yep. information, as you would expect, names, addresses, contact details, Usual stuff. You know, statements, of, yeah, all of those sorts of simple information. Data birth, all the things, yep. <laughs> You're also always going to have a volume of data that won't sit in any system. Right. Um, funeral plans, funeral requests, yep. guardianship, executors. Yep. What happens with grandma's wedding ring? Yeah. So there is always going to be an element of data collection that is, mm. is going to have to be done. Now, whether yeah. that is done advisor-led, whether that is done by the client yep. who is invited securely to input that data in, yep. or whether that is done through Yodel Concierge, right. it doesn't matter how that is done, but there will always be a volume of data um, that needs to be collected because it doesn't sit anywhere else. Because it's unique um, to this particular. Absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's very personal, very unique, and it's matter specific. Yeah. Um, but whilst I use the words volume of data, um, you're talking about stuff that may take seven or eight minutes to collect. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So then in terms of um, where Yodel's going into, you know, looking forward, uh, you sure. mentioned some more integrations, um, which is a, a usual thing when we're talking about tech. It's always what integrations are coming up. What else is on the development path? You know, what else is coming up um, for, for you and the team? We have two parts to the Yodel business. We have one part which we refer to, and I'm using internal language, mm. uh, that we refer to as core target market. Yep. And that is our advisors, our accountants. Yep. Um, they may have 100, they may have 1,000 clients, but critical part of our business is where the Yodel business has been born, built, and grown on. Yep. Um, very, very important to, to our learning and what we do. So that's, yep. that's one half of our business. The second half of our business is um, more enterprise. Large organisations, big dealer groups, retail banks, superannuation funds, insurers. Um, we have seen significant opportunities in the enterprise space. Yeah, okay. And that, that, I guess, is driven by a couple of reasons. Number one, literally billions of dollars worth of work got tossed up in the air uh, when the banks exited regulated advice. <laughs> yep. People are stepping into that space. Yeah. Um, there is a huge client need and there is a huge commercial opportunity. So yeah. we're, we're seeing people stepping into that void. Uh, and Yodel really ha does have the only dedicated enterprise solution. So yeah. uh, we have a, a series of resources going into the enterprise space. Um, watch this space for some yeah. very exciting things. Um, so there's definitely that. Uh, from a uh, platform perspective, mm. we cannot ignore the... Um, AI. Yep. We cannot ignore the place that AI will will play in what we're doing. Yep. It will never, I won't say never, never say never, <laughs> but I think we're a long way off it replacing what Yodel does or what advisors do, yep. but to ignore it is to be uh, ignorant. Yeah. So we can't ignore it. We need to understand its place and its value, yep. but we also need to understand its limitations and its risks. Yeah. yeah so there's, there's work going in there. Uh, the third area where we're sort of focusing is the 
what happens when conversation. What happens when a matter is complete? So we have a new tool that will be coming online towards the end of this year uh, called the Living Will. Mm -hmm. I won't say too much about Living Will, but it is very, very exciting. It is, yep. it is an absolute, um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, so that is more about the will maker experience. Yep. After the will has been completed. Once it's done. Or at the time where elements of that will need to be enacted. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, because like we talked about right at the beginning, Peter, that's it's it's often the most horrific time for people. Yeah. So if we can step them in a fully supported way, attribute the value of that support back to their advisor. Yeah. And really do it in a colour by numbers way where they feel right. safe. Yeah. Uh, Full of and, and, in, and yep. informed and empowered. Yes. Um, nobody loses. Correct. And look, we've got to be frank here. This is something that happens all the time. All the time. So some, so some poor person having to deal with this as the first time they've ever had to do it, and start from scratch. It's yeah. it's crazy, right? It's crazy that that's how it need that that's how it might be. So yep. absolutely, something that says you know brings all all that insight together, yep. and is a guide, you know, yep. so it can take them down that path. And of course, something that, that makes genuinely sense. puts everything you need, and I'm talking people, support, information, resources, literally. In one place. Yeah. Yeah, because you just don't know what you just don't know. No. And that will always be true. No, and how um, could they possibly? And, and, well, <laughs> it's just fortunately, too hard. fortunately, they never know, but that won't happen. Right. You know, there, there right. will come a time where, um, you know, it's like you, you put insurance on your car. You spend thousands of dollars a year insuring your car, but you hope you never need it. Correct. But when you're talking about estate planning, there is no set of circumstances where you will never need it. Right. Okay, yeah. it's it's the one insurance policy you will always use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, so anything else we've missed? Anything, anything else we've missed? Um, I guess two things. There is a very big difference between the space that Yodel plays in, and that is we are a business to business solution. Yep, business. We are not a B two C business. Yep. We have unique offerings, unique value prof propositions, unique tools that have been designed to because financial services and professional services are their own complex, compliance driven animals. Yeah. We ensure through Yodel that compliance is maintained, accuracy is maintained. Yep. Um, and risk. We, we often use the words off-risk. Advice businesses who adopt a Yodel solution or partner with Yodel as their estate planning partner, um, they are off-risk. We have yep. compliance built into our tools and the mandatory inclusion of lawyers in every single matter ensures that the advisor and the advice businesses remain off-risk. Uh, so Yodel is not, is, is, is not an online will. They are probably yep. the, the two points. Um, what I would, uh, I guess, um, challenge people to do, if you are currently doing estate planning, go and have a look at yodel.com.au mm -hmm. and have a look at what we offer. Yep. If you are doing estate planning and you're not using Yodel, you can be doing it better than you're currently doing it. Mm -hmm. If you are thinking about doing estate planning and you want a dedicated partner that has a solution that will meet the requirements of your business and your clients, regardless of how big or how small you are, regardless of whether you're doing one matter a quarter or 50 matters a month, Yeah, we have a solution and a commercial structure that works for you. And if you go to the dealer group and more enterprise space, yep, you as organizations, you need to grow your dealer groups. You need to ensure in a market, sorry, in, in a resource deficient market, you need to ensure that you are adding maximum value to your existing licensees or existing advisors, and you also need to have the most compelling proposition to attract new advisors. Yeah. There is not only the commercial and service realities of Yodel, but there is an undeniable attraction and retention value by having a conversation with us about how do we partner with you guys. 
Okay, and so for you know the advisor listeners um, on the pod, uh, listening to the podcast, then if yeah, absolutely, um, you know, go and check out Yodel, but feel free to point your dealer group at them. <laughs> Say I need you guys to talk to them too, because of course that's how we work anyway, don't we? I mean, we've that it's a it's a sort of a three dimensional relationship the way we work with a lot of these things. So I'm, it, it I'm expecting yep. you guys are very comfortable having those conversations at a dealer group level. So they advisors can even- will come to us. We'll end up with four, five, six, ten advisors from a particular AFSL. Yeah. They will then go, hey, this is awesome. They'll send us to their advisor council. The advisor council will put us in the dealer group. But if we know that that's the direction that the river's flowing, we will also use our networks and attack the dealer group on their behalf from a top-down approach. Perfect. So everything we do is is about partnerships. Yeah. If everybody doesn't win, we're not interested. Yeah. Everybody needs to win. Perfect, perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Yodel, then like uh, we mentioned then, the website link is going to be in the episode show notes, along with Brandon's LinkedIn details. Now, I'm sure he's not the person that will actually necessarily be answering your questions, but I'm sure he'd be happy for you to nudge him on LinkedIn and he'll point you in the right direction of which team member can look after you. Um, you know, this, like you say, this is such a big space going forward. Uh, and I think at the very least for us to all, you know, as advisors, inform ourselves on some more proactive ways we can provide these solutions to clients. I think, you know, will really put Absolutely. us, but also more importantly, our clients in good stead in the future. Even, even if at the end of the day, an advice business or a dealer group makes a conscious decision that we are not going to pursue an estate planning offering, at least have a conversation with us first. Hmm. And when you make that decision, it's informed. Exactly. And look, that's that's just what we want for our clients too, isn't it? Yep, like it's just it. informed consent, informed decisions are all the way the way we need to move forward. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And, you know, we are no, all going to be digging Peter, into this far you. more. Not at all. Same You're very ensemble. welcome. Now for the opportunity, uh, we, we welcome the ability to do this. Um, and uh, we certainly welcome uh, the opportunity to introduce Yodel um, to, to the advisors or the audience. Absolutely. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm, I'm really curious if you are a current user of Yodel. Uh, I know there are people out there who utilize the tool. Uh, so I'm really curious on your take on it and, you know, what your experience has been, um, pros, cons, tips and tricks. Please share your insights on the Ensemble Community Platform. Um, I know my team and I are looking into all of this. Uh, and so I'd certainly appreciate any insight you have. And I'm sure the rest of the community would too. In terms of my thoughts on, well, Yodel, but also sort of broader than that, I think as an industry, we're really going to need to hunt out tools that help us connect to the generations on either side of our clients. You know, whether this is for estate planning, it could be insights into aged care, uh, longevity analysis, all sorts of things that we're going to need to hunt out. You know, no matter what the topic is, you know, in fact, this and the reason is because it's not just for the advisor with older clients. So worrying about what's going to happen as we get older, worrying about what's going to happen when we pass away or we or we um, you know get really sick, whatever that might be, this isn't just for older clients. You know, I guarantee you if you have clients 40 in their 40s or 50s, say, they're going to be worrying about this and how it's all going to work for them, how are they going to manage it, how do they bring it up with mum and dad, you know, it it absolutely makes sense um, across many generations to both have an ability to bring this up as a conversation um, and also have tools that at the very least can help facilitate a result for them. Uh, and you know what? I think it really makes sense to focus on making difficult moments easier for our clients, you know, and and I think that's ultimately our goal, right, no matter what those difficult moments might be. Um, this could be just ensuring they get that paperwork done. It could be educating their powers of attorney on what that means and how to go about things when, you know, the worst happens. No matter, matter what that is, you know, how can we make those difficult moments easier? And, you know, when I think about it, honestly, I mean, we mentioned it in uh, the interview, but I think we probably need some better names for things. You know, I think estate planning is just something that has no meaning to anybody except those in the industry. Um, Yodel, uh, as Brendan shared, uses transfer and protection. Um, you know, is there something else that would make more sense to the public? Uh, and, you know, 
to that end, I'd actually love to hear you know, the way you bring this topic up with your clients. What's the language they use? Is there something cheeky um, that could otherwise uh, be less um, formal and and just say what it is rather than your words that the clients may never have heard about before? So please, um, you know, please share any of your ideas on the Ensemble platform. All righty, we're up to that time. It is Curiosity Corner time and we have an app to keep your curiosity muscle working um, so that we can all continue to become bionic advisors. So the app I'd like you to look at this week is called Drawify, uh, which is not easy to spell or say. You can find it at drawify.com. This is D-R-A-W-I-F-Y.com. And their tagline is captivate your audience with unique hand-drawn images. This has over 50,000 hand-drawn illustrations. And what they help you do is use those to create a visual and eye-catching story. Um, what we're thinking here, think of any diagram. You, maybe there's diagrams you do on a whiteboard that you've always wanted to try and put into something that could be used as a PDF or something you could send to clients. But every time you try and do that in PowerPoint or equivalent, it's just all stiff and formal and boxes and arrows. Well, you know, if you use hand drawn illustrations to do that, perhaps it'll have a bit more of that energy, right? So uh, they have templates as well. So it's not just the drawings themselves, the illustrations. They also have templates that you can then drag and drop the particular images you like into it. So really, this is all about, you know, translating that complex information into something really compelling and also easy to remember as a visual, visual, right? So it's it's not stiff and formal. Um, it doesn't look scientific. This is more human and looks like that thing you've whipped up that we've all done in a meeting where we've done a drawing in front of our clients. Um, Without, though, what I like is without me actually having to do the drawing because, to be quite frank, I'm hideous at it. So this really caught my attention. I would love to hear if you check it out and you think it's worthwhile, uh, let me know. But I think it's one of those many things we do have um, that could meet a particular need. Okie dokie. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. If you are not on the Ensemble platform already and you're an advisor or work in advice practice, I really would encourage you to join the Ensemble community um, and that is free to join in and you can get to inc- interact and chat to all of your fel- fellow uh, Ensemblers. Is that a word? Um, but I would encourage you to do that. Now, if this episode has sparked some ideas for you on, you know, wanting to engage with your team more, get that curiosity pumping, um, project management, you know, coming up with ideas, then I would love to facilitate a team building session for your team, basically around building their curiosity muscle and coming up with a structure and a format for how you can really innovate regularly and successfully in the practice. Uh, So please reach out to me on LinkedIn if that's of interest. That's LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 